you're looking for a new gaming or otherwise CPU and you want some helpful advice, hints and tips on which CPU is best for you and what things you should be looking out for if you're planning on picking one. Well, I have quit the collection myself and hopefully I'll be able to give you a few answers as to some of the questions you may have and hopefully point you in the right direction of uh, the chip that's best suited for you. So let's take a look. So first things first, the biggest thing is definitely price. How much money are you willing to spend on your CPU? Do bear in mind that if you're upgrading, then this is mostly going to be locking you down to the existing platform, the, the existing motherboard you have, unless you're also planning on upgrading the motherboard. But also bear in mind that you also might need to upgrade your cooling and your RAM uh, if you are also upgrading your motherboard as well. So again, do bear that one in mind that is uh, quite a big change. Now, if you're planning on doing a full new system, then you're also going to need to work out how much you want to budget for your uh, CPU versus how much you want to budget for your graphics card, your motherboard, your case and all that uh, sort of other stuff. So do bear that one in mind. Now, the main thing, the main bit of advice for this that I would uh, mention is if you're going for uh, just pure gaming, then you want to spend a little bit more on your graphics card than you do on your CPU if you're only ever planning on gaming and web browsing and stuff like that. Although if you are planning on doing some extra stuff like video editing, 3D modeling, games development, or anything that's also CPU intensive, then you might want to spend a little bit more money on a, for example, Ryzen 7 CPU or one of the more high-end Intel 7700K or even X299 platform uh, chips and go from there. What I would say is the second biggest consideration is what you're going to do with it. As I said, if you're just planning on gaming, then one of the more low-end Intel or AMD chips, you know, uh, quad-core kind of thing, is going to be perfectly fine for you. Something like the Ryzen uh, 5 1400, that's going to be just fine, especially if you're playing some of the sort of uh, more esports titles, stuff like CSGO, uh, League of Legends, Dota 2. Uh, those sorts of games do perfectly fine on that sort of hardware. But if you're planning on playing more demanding games, or as I said, if you're doing uh, stuff like video editing, 3D modeling, games development, then more high end chips like a 76 or 7700K, X299, or the Ryzen 5 uh, sort of high end 1600X, or you you know, Ryzen 7 chips are a fantastic shout, especially on the Ryzen front at the moment, and especially for stuff like uh, video editing and all that sort of stuff. Another big consideration, especially on the gaming side of things, is actually what resolution you want to play at. If you're planning on picking up a GTX 1080 Ti or a Vega card, depending on when you watch this, and munching through some 4K games, then a Ryzen 7 1700 or 1700X is a fantastic choice, especially because you get, uh, depending on which uh, Intel chip you're comparing to, quadruple or double the cores and threads and you also get uh, obviously just the, the sheer power especially if you're doing stuff like video editing uh, 3d modeling or anything that is generally CPU intensive if you are planning on going for something like 1080p then a 76 or a 7700k from Intel is still currently the best shout for performance although some may see this as a bit of a short-sighted move especially as optimizations are coming to the Ryzen CPUs such that uh, you're getting incredible performance in games where you previously weren't so uh, just, just bear that one in mind and also think about what sort of upgrade cycle you kind of want. Uh, if you're going for one of these, uh, especially Ryzen 7 CPUs, then your upgrade cycle is likely going to be a few years longer than if you're going for a 76 to 7700K. So just bear that one in mind. Features are a pretty big thing that you want to look out for. Intel generally has a sort of stranglehold on Thunderbolt 3, so if that's something you're interested in, then Intel is the way to go for you. Uh, also, uh, another point is that none of the Ryzen CPUs currently have any uh, integrated graphics built in even though the motherboards often come with uh, graphics connectors you know HDMI DisplayPort DVI on the motherboard so none of these Ryzen chips currently have that uh, available the Intel 76 and 7700 uh, 7700Ks anything that goes in Z270 generally has integrated graphics which is actually a really nice and very useful tool you can use QuickSync if you're doing uh, streaming and stuff like that and if you want to do stuff like IO MMU pass through in Linux to be able to sort of run a virtual machine to play Windows games on Linux without properly dual booting, then uh, IOMU caster is uh, a lot better on uh, Intel at this specific moment, and especially because you have the iGPU, just makes it a bit easier. But uh, the X299 version of the 76 and 7700Ks don't have the iGPUs, which is uh, kind of sketchy, I would say. It's a, it's a bit weird because they're basically selling you the same chip for almost the same price, if not more, without the GPU, but, uh, you know, like a 100 megahertz clock increase. So, 
yeah, kind of crazy, but um, as I was originally saying, features are a pretty big thing. So as said, uh, Intel does have Thunderbolt 3. Um, Ryzen uh, generally actually has better thermals at this point in time and better TDP. Um, but overall, uh, just take a look at the different uh, features, especially that the motherboards provide before you jump into specifically which one you want to go for. So just a couple other uh, bits of advice for you. First thing is that make sure when you're actually picking your CPU, you base it on facts, you base it on the performance and the features that the platform provides and not the logo on the box. It is incredibly stupid to do that and the, I, the comments that I see from people who say, you know, Ryzen sucks because Intel is better or, you know, Intel is better because, uh, or uh, AMD is better because Intel sucks. It's incredibly short-sighted, it's incredibly stupid and I hate to see it because it's just so blind. Um, so yeah, please, please don't leave the sort of comments um, and also just when you're making your decision, base it on facts and not the brand that's on the box because as I said, it's, that's just stupid. I should also make it clear that at the time of filming, 1080p gaming especially, Intel still has the edge in terms of raw performance. If you're planning on streaming, I did a full video for Player Unknown's Battlegrounds testing that, uh, which uh, sort of comparing the 7700K to the uh, Ryzen 7 1700, uh, and the, the main takeaway from that is that the actual performance hit from Ryzen is next to nothing, uh, whereas for Intel it's relatively considerable but uh, the actual performance overall even when streaming even though there's a large performance hit for Intel the the FPS it's still higher on Intel so it's a little bit confusing at least in player unknowns battlegrounds but depending on what game you're playing you will see a decent benefit if you're doing uh, you know productivity tasks streaming while gaming that sort of stuff on Ryzen over the Intel chips and I should also point out that the x299 chipset is actually a very weird one as they're carrying Skylake X and Kaby Lake or Kaby Lake X chips the KB Lake X chips are literally just uh, 77 and uh, 7600Ks with the GPUs fused off and put on a bigger substrate to fit onto the, 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 the new socket and overclocked slightly with a higher TDP. Uh, but if you're you know, planning on going for the higher end chips, then do also compare them to the Ryzen CPUs when available. I obviously do have this motherboard. I'm also getting a few more motherboards and hopefully I'll get my hands on a chip very shortly. So depending on when th this video goes up, you should probably be seeing some uh, reviews of motherboards and CPUs pretty shortly so it'll be interesting to see but uh yeah, either way, uh, I guess that's kind of that, really. So if you've got any questions about the CPUs, about anything I spoke about, or just your own questions, let me know in the comments down below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to support me, feel free to take a look at some of the Amazon links uh, for some of these bits and pieces in the links in the description down below. And of course, if you want to support me further, check out the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links. This is my full-time job, and I really do, uh, do need that support to keep paying the rent. So if you could do that, that'd be fantastic. Also, feel free to take a look at the merch link as well. There's also a subscribe button down there if you haven't already hit it, feel free to do so. And let me know what you thought of the video in the comments down below. You want to see more of these sort of explained uh, videos uh, or you want to go back to, to normal reviews, let me know as well. But uh, yeah, otherwise, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful and we'll see you all in the next video.